So far, we've created a context level diagram, or sometimes called level zero diagram, for our XYZ University scenario. And we've created a decomposition diagram for our XYZ University scenario as well. Now, in this video, we're going to extend that scenario to the next level, which is to create the level one or the high level process diagram. When we create the high level process diagram, what we're essentially doing is we're taking our decomposition diagram, we're taking our sub processes out of the decomposition diagram, and we're creating those into our high level or level one diagram. Additionally, we go back to the context level diagram and we take our external entities from there and bring those into the high level diagram. What I recommend is we take each line of the scenario separately. And as I said in previous videos, when we have a scenario in real life, we are going to know what the scope is for that scenario. And we're going to know what the topics are and where we're going to focus our energies. When we only have the scenario that I provide for the class, then just use what's in the scenario and try not to expand beyond what's there. So let's get started. First, we have our entities. We know we have in our example, we have campus ministers. So let's go ahead and put the campus ministers in. And for this video, I decided to leave the scenario on the same di diagram as what we're building on. We also have in our example, the student or students. So those are our two external entities. You'll note that those are the same as what we had in our context level diagram. We go back to our scenario here. We see the university campus ministers use the chapel system to notify students of chapel dates and topics. If we go back to our decomposition diagram, we notice that our level one diagrams, or our level one diagram includes these level one items or processes. So we'll create the 1.0 we can actually copy that over, hitting Control C or Command C on a Mac, and put it in our display. So now we have this process in here. And what happens? The campus ministers use the chapel system to notify the students of chapel dates and topics. So that means there's going to be a data flow going from the campus ministers to the 1.0 notify of dates and topics process and we'll call that actually the chapel dates and topics now I know we're going to be copying that over because it goes over here to the data flow to the students because they get notified of this so I'm going to just copy and paste the text over And for using draw.io, one of the things you'll note is all you have to do is double click on an item and you'll be able to change the text. So I'm double clicking on the students and now I can change the students text if I wanted to. So now we have the chapel dates going from the campus ministers into our system. And the 1.0 Notify of Dates and Topics system also will go ahead and send that out to the students. So here we have the first sentence is covered. Students attend chapel. Again, that's a physical action. It's not a data action. So we don't, mod we don't add that into our diagram. At the end of chapel, the students present their IDs to be scanned and the results are stored in a file. So now we know we have to have a file, a data store in here somewhere. We'll call that data store attendance. And how does that work? Well, the students will show their IDs and we can go into our second process of recording attendance. Again, I'm just going to hit Control-C or Command-C, go back to our diagram over here, and hit 
Command V or Control V depending on what it is that you're using whether it's a Windows based machine or a Mac based machine and now we have our students ID or identification is going into the record attendance and one of the things we want to do is ensure that we don't have lines crossing over each other as to the best of our ability sometimes these get complex and that can happen but we want to avoid it as much as possible when we're creating the diagram so that it's clear what is going where so now we have our student identification information going into the record attendance and as our scenario says the results are stored in a file so that record attendance process sends the attendance information to the attendance file well what happens next at the end of the term the system generates a report of attendance for the ministers and contacts students with fewer than 30 chapel credits so if we go back to our decomposition diagram we see our last process in there again command C or control C depending on whether you're using a Mac or Windows it says report at probation slash attendance so we're gonna go ahead and put that process in our dis diagram as well and it says at the end of the term the system generates a report of attendance for the ministers and contact students so it's going to have to send draw the information from the attendance file and then from there it's going to send an attendance report to the ministers again we've got the problem of where that lines uh, lines up so we gotta make sure we move it around and try to make it as clear as possible and then finally it contacts the students with fewer than 30 chapel credits so now the system this process is going to have to send some message back to the students and let them know that they are on probation and that completes our series of the three videos on creating the data flow diagrams for our scenario of the XYZ University I hope you enjoyed this if you wanted to you can click right over here on your general and you can add in uh, title for it just the same as with the other videos we can go ahead and call this level one or high level diagram and call it the XYZ level one diagram and there we have it I hope you found this video helpful have a great day